Hey everyone, Dr. Yu here. Today we're going to look at states of matter. We know that matter exists in different states, right? Depending on environmental conditions such as the temperature and pressure. So today we're gonna go through the different things required by ATI. So we're gonna talk about the three main different states of matter. And then we're gonna talk about the movement of molecules in different states. We will differentiate between the different phases of matter. And then we'll look at the changes between states of matter. For example, you know, melting, and that's from solid to liquid. Freezing, that's from liquid to solid. So we'll look at what happens to heat uh, to energy when matter transitions from one state to another. All right, so just real quick overview on state of matter. There are four phases, solid, liquid, gas, and plasma. But we only need to worry about the first three phases. Plasma state is a very advanced topic, and I don't even know uh, much about the plasma state. So we are going to focus on the first three phases. One thing you need to know about molecules is that as long as the temperature is above the absolute zero, which is zero K or Let's use the second unit because this is something that we're more familiar with. You know the unit for temperature, right, which is degree Celsius. We have talked about conversion between Celsius and Fahrenheit before. So this is based on Celsius. Negative 273 degrees Celsius, that's the absolute zero. Above the absolute zero, molecules are in constant motion. And this actually provides the, the basis for why diffusion takes place, because molecules are constantly on the move. And the collision between the molecules create this phenomenon known as diffusion, where molecules move from high concentration area to lower concentration area. So just keep in mind that, that molecules are in constant motion, and we will tie this to the different phases of matter um, in just a second. So in solids, molecules are packed in, in the tight and the orderly pattern, and it's less tight and orderly in liquid, and it's the least tight and orderly in gas. So again, we'll tie these back to the, to the transitions between different states in, the just, in, in just a moment. So here is an image of the temperature and the pressure in relation to the phase of a substance. So you can see temperature on the X axis and the pressure on the Y axis. So this indicates from low temperature to high temperature. And similar here, right? The arrow goes from low pressure to high pressure. All right, now there are some lines, the red line, green line, and blue line. So those lines will kind of define the region where, um, you know, within this environmental condition, the substance will, in, will be in a particular phase. For example, in this area, the substance will be in solid. So you can actually find a particular point. So I'm going to use green. So let's say the temperature is at this point and the pressure is at this particular value. And then when you put those two together, you can see at this particular environmental condition, basically at this particular temperature and the pressure, the substance will be in the solid state. Now, what happens if you use the same pressure, but you increase the temperature? So let's say we increase the temperature to this point. You draw a line and the pressure is still the same, right? And then you find that the intersection. So at this particular temperature and pressure, substance will be in liquid, right? So you can see if you keep the pressure constant but increase the temperature, the substance will change from solid to liquid. Right? Basically, you provide heat, you provide energy. So now the molecules can really spread out, right? They become less orderly. They become liquid, right? From the previous solid state. So liquid is in this particular region, right? Between the green line and the blue line. Now, how about gas? So gas is going to be in this area. So any 
environmental condition that falls into this area will have this will have um, the gas state for this particular substance. So again, uh, let's say we use the same temperature. So temperature is this, is this point, but we're gonna decrease the pressure to maybe a quarter of the previous value. So you, now this is the new pressure and you draw a line here where it intercepts with the temperature line. So at this particular temperature and pressure, the substance will be in the gas state. Less pressure, less uh, force to kind of pack the molecules tight, right? So the molecules are um, not very tightly packed. Again, they can spread out a lot. So in the gas state, remember the molecules spread out the most. They're the least tightly packed and they're the least orderly. All right, now when you look at solid, solid has a definite volume and shape, right? You look at any solid, the shape does not change, right? It's a definite shape and you can measure the volume. But when you look at liquid, liquid, it does have a volume. You can measure the volume of water or any other solution, but there's no definite shape, right? If you put water in a circular container, they're gonna be circular. But if you put water in a rectangular container, then you know, water's gonna be rectangular. So there's no definite shape for a liquid. For gas, they don't have a definite volume or shape. So gas can be in any shape, you know, uh, and there's no definite volume. So now let's look at changes between states of matter. And you're going to focus on the organization of molecules. And when that organization is broken, uh, that's going to affect the different states of matter. And what's going to um, break that organization, that's going to be heat or energy. When you provide heat, heat energizes the molecules, and that's going to overcome the intermolecular force that hold the molecules together. And this is going to increase the vibrational and translational motion of molecules so that the molecules can really spread out and they become less packed and orderly. A quick example. So let's say in solid, everything is packed very neatly, very tightly. Okay, so that's a solid. And if you provide heat, then with that additional energy, these molecules can spread out and become less tightly packed and less orderly. So you can see there is a greater distance between these molecules, right? So when you provide heat, something solid can melt and become liquid. And really, when you look at more closely, it all boils down to uh, providing heat allows the molecules to overcome the intermolecular force that keep them together. So now they spread out, they become less packed and orderly, and that will be liquid, right? Or if you provide a lot of heat, then molecules then the substance may become a gas phase or gas state, right? They will be, you know, even less packed and orderly. So again, when you transition from solid to liquid or gas, heat is gained, right, from, by this transition. So from solid to liquid, that's called a melting. Liquid to gas, that's boiling. When you boil water, water uh, becomes water vapor. So that's boiling. From solid to gas, sublimation. Um, so you could skip that liquid phase in the middle and you can change something directly from solid to gas. And remember, all these transitions will gain heat, right? They need to gain heat to uh, overcome that intermolecular force to make the molecules go farther from one another. Now, the opposite direction the, uh, for the transitions, if you want to change from a less orderly state to more orderly state, that's going to release heat. So the transition will release heat. So that includes from liquid to solid. That's freezing, right, from water to ice. 
from gas to liquid, that's condensation. If you put very cold drink on the table, the air is warm, right? So the gas molecules in the air will come into contact with that very cold drink and they become liquid, right? That's called condensation. From gas to, to solid directly, that's called a deposition. For instance, from water vapor in the atmosphere to ice, snow, coming down the sky, right? And that's the transition from gas directly to solid. So this three types of transition loses heat. So when I say loses heat, that means these transitions release heat into the environment. Okay, um, this is a very short lesson, so there's not too much content. But I do have a, a few practice problems. So number one, which of the following phase changes require the gain of heat? That means the transition requires heat or energy. I'm using the wording from the ATI study manual. I don't really agree with the wording. I think the wording is a little bit confusing, but we kind of have to stick to what they do, right? Follow their um, directions, follow their wordings. So basically when it says require the gain of heat, that means the transition requires input of heat. So heat is required when you change from more orderly to less orderly, right? Less orderly. Now we answer questions. If it's kind of hard to think about this in your brain, you can list the different states from more orderly to less orderly, right? So that means from solid to liquid to gas. Which one of the options goes from left to right? Boiling, boiling that's from liquid to gas, right? So that might be correct. So that's A. And freezing, that's from liquid to solid, right? That's the opposite direction. So that's not right. B is not right. Deposition, that that's from gas to solid, also the wrong direction. So C is not correct. Condensation, from gas to liquid. So that's not correct either. So the only correct option is boiling, A. The second question can ask you about the different direction, right? Which of the following phase changes require the loss of heat? That means the transition releases heat into the environment, right? So the molecules, the substance loses heat. So transition that releases heat would be from less orderly to more orderly. Right, so that will be, you know, from gas to liquid to solid, right? So anything that goes from left to right will be the correct answer. So let's see, sublimation. Sublimation is from solid to gas, right? So solid to gas is the wrong direction. So A is not correct. Melting, melting is from solid to liquid. Now that's not the correct direction either. Boiling, boiling is from liquid to gas. That's not the correct answer. Freezing, freezing that's from liquid to solid, right? Okay, so that one is from less orderly to more orderly. So D is the correct answer. Number three, which of the following is true of gas? Remember gas is the least orderly pattern. Right, the molecules are really, really spread out in space. So gas does not have a definite shape or a definite volume. So the correct answer is B. No definite shape, no definite volume. All right, we're done with this lesson. Good job, guys.